Describe the beam transport system for protons. Describe a cyclotron and how is it used in proton therapy? What is the difference between a cyclotron and a synchrotron? How much current would you need to get 400 centigrade per minute in a proton beam? What is needed by proton dose algorithms for planning? And what is one issue with raster scanning for protons? So describe a dream a beam transport system for protons. So don't make it more difficult than it is. Just mention the things that are within a beam transport system. So number one, you have a bending magnet. You also have a focusing magnet. And you have the diagnostic tools, diagnostic tools. There we go. So a cyclotron and how's it's used. So typically a cyclotron is two to four Tesla. Essentially, you're going to inject the H2 plus ions, which ultimately are two protons and an electron into the accelerating plane. You have two Ds. D-E-E-S, look those up. Essentially, they just look like this, couple Ds, and they each have a voltage of 100 uh, KeV. KeV. And so the protons are extracted from the accelerated H2 uh, ions by hitting a stripping foil, which is made of graphite. Now that term is called stripping. So remember, you're just using the graphite and those ions hitting that foil is going to strip and allow you to take the protons that removes the electrons from the ion beam. And you can use the protons to then go through the some of the magnets, the diagnostic tools, and ultimately be used for treatments. So now what is the difference between cyclotron and synchrotron? So this is a big one. I definitely encourage you to know the difference. Cyclotron, number one, is the energy is fixed. So to change the energy, you need a degrader, which has negative effects. Uh, for example, you would need more shielding because they make more scattered particles. They also could potentially create neutrons. And then there is some post radioactivity when you're irradiating a degrader. You also get a continuous beam. So, and then I'm just going to put degrader for that. Now, for a synchrotron, one particles move in the same radius. Uh, they are bigger than a cyclotron. So, you need more land, ultimately, more cost. The strength of the magnetic field is varied. So that is different than a cyclotron. And that ultimately is needed because if the strength of the magnetic field is varied, you can keep the radius that those protons are circulating around. You can keep that radius the same. And that means the extraction energy is varied which is a very favorable because now you don't need a degrader. So energy is varied. And this is also a pulsed beam, whereas again, the cyclotron is a continuous beam. So how much current to get 400 centigrade per minute in proton beams? So you would need uh, you know, a few nanoamps to get that. And that's just going to show clinical prowess that you have experience with protons. And when you can really nail little details like that, it really shows your knowledge and helps put real world expertise on display and really helps you get those extra points to get you a five on a question instead of a four. So now what is needed by proton dose algorithms? So I'll put it down here. So first thing you need is HU versus the electron density. Then you need the HU versus the relative stopping power. And so ultimately what this is just is, is the rate at which the charged particles lose their energy within that particular material, which is why you need the electron density, the relative stopping power. Now, what is one issue with raster scanning? So raster scanning leads to a very high instantaneous dose rates. 
I'm going to just put that dose rates. And ultimately what that is going to do is potentially lead to a high P ion. And when we are determining our beam and qualifying energies and just doing QA, we don't want those high instantaneous dose rates or a high P ion, as we know from our TG51 and other calibration protocols. So if you have any questions on protons, this is fairly, fairly basic, but important to know, definitely cyclotrons, synchrotrons, what go, it goes into a beam transport system. If you have anything else, please comment below. Thanks for watching and good luck studying.